All right, welcome back to Sports Edge. We are taking a tour of around the state of all the college football teams. And this week, today, Friday, we land at Sacred Heart Fairfield with the Pioneers and head coach Mark Nofrey. Coach, thanks for joining us. Tell us how have things gone these first couple weeks? <laughs> well, after two weeks, uh, I'm pretty happy where we're at. You know, um, it's the dog days of camp. You know, we're at that point now where you, know, you get a lot of nicks and bumps and bruises, and you know, people are getting tired of going up against one another offense, defensively. But the biggest thing for us is I like where we're at. I like the intensity. I like the speed of what we're doing. It, and I like some of the fact uh, seeing where our young kids came from the spring to where they are now and I feel good about where we're at as a team. You guys lost 26 seniors and you just mentioned young kids. Do you have enough younger players that are going to step in and fill some of these roles for you? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. I mean, uh, you know, we had redshirted some kids the last couple years and we had some sophomores um, that came back to play a little bit as a freshman. So that part of it's good. We do have a core group of kids that have been on the field for us and been battle tested. And then in the spring, we worked some of our young kids and they did a really nice job. You know, there's a good mesh right now. How do you continue this winning culture that you've built here? I mean, you go into the playoffs every year. I mean, uh, how do you keep that going in the offseason with these guys? What was the message to them? Uh, basically, you know, us as a coaching staff and the players need to be on the same page about everything, and we talk about it all the time. You just keep grinding, you know. Don't take anything for granted. Don't expect anything, and anything you get, you have to work for, and that's kind of been our motto, and I refer to our kids as grinders. I mean, you look at last year, how many games we were down either in the third or fourth quarter, and we, we hung around, we hung around, we found a way, and you come back and you win the game. And it, to me, that's a tribute to the kids and how tough they are mentally uh, and believing in themselves. Over the course of the last two years, going to the playoffs two years in a row, winning the NEC championship, it's helped us in recruiting. It's helped the kids that are in the program believe that they can do it if they continue to work. You win here, they give you things. You got a new field. How much does this help the program? It's huge. It's huge. You know, the last field was seven years old. It worn out its welcome, but uh, it looks great, you know, with the new track and the new field. And uh, hopefully the next process is uh, the new scoreboard and press box. So, um, but we're excited. We're excited for 2015 to get going and get, get on a roll again, hopefully, and see where it takes us. Now, listen, you're a football coach. This is a 24-7, seven-day-a-week job. We, uh, we get all that. And then the offseason, you find out you have colon cancer. Talk to me about first when you heard and, and, and how, how difficult has it been for you this offseason? When I first found out, I was pretty tough. You know, I'm 45 years old, and the doctor tells you you got stage 3 colon cancer, you know, and uh, you need surgery and find out what was going to go on. And it got infected into my lymph nodes, a couple of them. And it was a shock to me and my wife, you know, my family. Um, but the support I received here from, you know, Bobby V and Brad and, and Jim Barquinero, our vice president, has been unbelievable. Uh, the coaches, I told them what was going on the day I found out, and they were just, they were phenomenal. They were like, whatever you need, whatever you want, we're here for you. We'll make sure nothing changes they didn't miss a beat through spring i only made the first two spring practices and then i made the last spring game and uh when i got back here mid to end of april i mean it was like i had never left i mean like i said it it, it was a shock um, but understand that i needed to take care of it uh, because it was stage three at that point and i didn't know what the prognosis was going to be um, but everybody here has been great i mean the school's been so supportive and, and behind me and they're always checking on me the kids the coaches like i said i could leave practice tomorrow for three or four days even a week and things would run smooth and according to plan like i got a veteran staff that's been around each other here for at least seven or eight years so we've all been together and we've worked well together they know what to expect and they know what to do so you know the program's in great hands whether i'm standing here or not and you're almost done with chemotherapy i have three more treatments left i had to do 12 every other week and my first treatment was april 20th so my last one is september 28th and that will be 12 treatments which stay you know suggested that I take the 12 um, but you know it's tough I had a treatment this week and knocked me out you know Tuesday Wednesday Thursday a little bit and like I said I felt better today so I'm out here and I don't go again until <laughs> another two weeks August 31st and at that point I just gotta kind of take it easy and, and do what I can do and, and if I have to take a break I take a break well good luck thanks for taking a minute to thank talk you. to us and we look forward to seeing you guys this season Appreciate it. all right thank you coach we'll be back with more sports edge right after this